one thing I was wondering is if I had enough wire to wrap from the spool to wrap the new coil. We got a digital postal scale here. Measures by ounces and by tenths of ounces. So there's the wire that came off of the voice coil and it can be weighed. And it's registering 2.3 ounce. So I need at least 2.3 ounces worth of wire. And that counts some of the glues on there too, but close enough. So first thing I'll weigh a, a nearly empty spool would be close enough. That's showing up 0.7. So say 0.7 subtracted from this because that counts the plastic. Six point two, so I have ample amount of wire. Almost twice as much. So that would be six point two minus point seven was it? I'm not great with math. Five point five or something. So I have almost twice as much wire as I'd actually need. Alright, we got the glue mixed. That's the Remco eight oh five. Already got the activator in it, it takes a while for it to cure, so it's no problem right now got the spool ready to unwind and I got a glove on. I only have one glove so I'm going to be careful not to touch my right hand to anything. I'm going to try to keep it cleaned too with acetone during the process. The glove will have a powder coat on it. It might be showing up right there even. But I got to take that off with acetone before I can start. You don't want even the powder coat getting on here first because that's already been cleaned. It's been sanded and it's been cleaned with acetone, the voice coil former. I got the wire tape down right there. It's ready to start winding. That's how I do it. I'll also show you how meticulous you gotta be. It takes time. Take my fingernail, I don't have to have a glove on this hand. barely going to come into contact with it. I've already cleaned my hand anyways. I take my fingernail and I pull it down. I did this per every three winding. glue that gets on the top of it with with a, like I call the bounty towel, you know, the paper towel. We just wipe it off. No chemicals on it at all. Just wipe it off and it gets most. You can see there's still a little. As long as there's no clumps or nothing, get, just get most of it off. You don't want it, even much of a smear left. <coughs> As you can see, I did a pretty good job. It's good enough. Because it'll protrude each layer of the coil that you wrap from now on if you don't do that.
it's a matter of inspecting it, make sure there's no chips sticking up. If there are, use like a, a jeweler's tool and carefully break the chip off with the jeweler's tool. Very carefully, okay? You don't want no little chips like that. It will protrude the coil as you're wrapping it. You don't want it doing that. So go around and inspect it. Make sure there's no <coughs> um, chips that's large enough to cause any problem. They were supposed to be removed, wiped, out, wiped off earlier. Um, you're going to clean this with acetone. You want to run acetone around it, and when and, and acetone is harsh. It could even eat the uh, enamel layer on the coil. I don't know. Just do a damp kind of acetone on your cloth, just a damp acetone, and brush it very quickly across it. So that by the time it hits it, it'll pretty much evaporate. It's not going to sit on there eating it like an acid or something. I don't know how it, its reaction works, if it is an acid or what, but just do a brushing across it, a fast brushing. It'll cleanse it enough uh, for the next layer that you're going to put on it. And again, you know, mix the epoxy and wipe it across it, and you're going to start back down on it. Make sure that you don't get the wire too close to the edge, or it'll fall off during your wrapping when you're pressing the windings back against each other. Just um, be really careful. Windings are nice. See that? Really nice windings going down. That's layer one. Layer two is coming up. And then I should be able to remove it from the mold. Okay, I took the speaker <coughs> out of the heat cure oven and I got the mold off. The reason why I took the mold off early is just to make sure it's going to uh, fit in the gap. I would not normally do this. But I'm a, I'm a little afraid that it may not fit and this former is very strong so I don't think that I have to have the whole coil wrap for it to maintain its shape so I think it will withstand the next two wrappings without changing its inner diameter. But now i got to remove the tape and I'm praying and i got a little pit in my stomach so I'm always worried about this time. Will it fit? Will it fit? Will it fit? And I'm not sure but I did my best. so. Here we go. Will it fit? I'm going to have to cut it here because I'm going to have to work it with both hands to get it down in there. Pass this around. Oh my god. Sigh of relief. <laughs> it fits. That's awesome. Oh my god, that's good. So, I'm careful right here since it's not aligned. But watch. You see it move? good. It's, it's, um, whew, it fits the gap. <laughs> it's a big relief. It takes days of work to get to this point because all the heat cures and the heat cure oven and all. Oh my god, it fits. So, half of the coil is wound, meaning one of the voice coils. Since it's a DVC, a dual voice coil. Alright, so on to the next step, which is wrapping the next coil, the final coil.